Welcome to a short update on the price action of Bitcoin. As of yesterday, we have been seeing some consolidation and another test of support. And what we can see is that support is holding at this point as we see buyers stepping into the market. Yesterday was also a big day when it comes to news, which we will be discussing after. But before we continue, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also check out the 30% discount we have. We still have a few more days and spots left. It is for our premium membership in which we today included Forex trading as well. And the boys are absolutely killing it. We've got multiple portfolios, which you can follow. My portfolio is up 10% on the month. We are going to announce copy training in January. In order to be a member, you have to join our premium membership if you want to follow those 30% discounts. But before we continue, um, also check out our free trade letter. And also, if you want to become a member, PayPal and crypto are both accepted. Just send me a DM on Twitter or send us a mail at support at 8global.com. When we're looking at the price action of Bitcoin, we have been marking a few important levels that we have to crack, right? So the level that we have here at 16.9 is definitely the crucial area that we need to break through if Bitcoin wants something and once it cracks 16.9, I think the odds are quite significant that we're going to smash pretty fast towards the range of 17.7 to 18k. Um, the first real resistance is at 17.5, so this gap will be closed. But honestly, I believe that we're going to continue moving to the upside um, if we are going to crack it. Now, there was also some news yesterday before I continue, which is about Voyager, which is being bought by Binance. And that's different than what the FTX thing is. This is uh, Suzu who is tweeting about it, but he actually has some fair, fair points here, in which he states that the Binance buyout of Voyager is likely to give users a chance to withdraw or hold their remaining funds as crypto instead of waiting for liquidation, which in the end is also positive for everyone involved in the crypto markets. Binance also gets customer acquisition. The FTX attempted buyout was so that Alameda wouldn't have to return its loan on uh, Voyager itself. So that's a big difference. And I think right now we can see that everything that Binance has been doing is getting into a bad spotlight. However, they are doing a pretty good case. They are not insolvent. There is no stuff happening over there. They are actually trying to make the markets work again. And we, therefore, we could be at a case that we are actually bottoming out. Um, and because Bitcoin and crypto has been falling so heavily in the past period that there is still a gap to make towards the other markets or towards where it should be hanging at this point. So we are still at 16.8K. And if you look at the tremendous amount of bearishness we have been going through in the past six weeks, it is uh, pretty astonishing to say that we're still at 16.8K and Ethereum still is going to be trending at 1200 plus as the low of Ethereum was 800 something, which was being pushed by Alameda. Now 16.9 is the crucial resistance zone. I think that if we crack at 17.5 and especially 17.7 are next, if we continue to crawl towards 17.7, I think that we won't even be getting a correction all the way to 16.9. We just have a short one to 17.0 and continue the trend. And that's when you are going to see altcoins starting to wake up as well. So I'm still watching 16.9 to see whether we are going to get a crack there. Um, and also we were mentioning another level yesterday, which was the area around 16.2, which as you can see, we have been holding for support. And in that way, the fact that we are holding here, we've seen this big bounce up on Bitcoin taking place. So if you are looking for long positions that have not been filled, and I think 16.2 was a pretty significant one, if it's not filled, you're looking for a higher low confirmation at 16.5. The only issue you are having here is that you probably, if you want to see a reversal taking place, you don't want to see Bitcoin go as deep as it is. So in this case, we also were grinding back up, as you can see here. <coughs> we were grinding back up and price started to continue rallying. So in this case, we had a slight wick to the downside, which could be towards 16.650 or so. But every time when Bitcoin starts to rally, you don't get a very deep correction taking place. So in this case, a corrective move towards 16.6-ish is probably a better ROI than looking for 16.5. Because if we get towards 16.5, that is the point where you probably are going to look for shorts more than for longs, as there are no real buyers stepping in. And now that we've just got this bullish divergence taking place on the two hour time frame, as you can see, 
we got the reclaim it is very likely that we continue pushing to the upside as more and more traders find arguments to actually trade this position in that way if you look at ether there's even more strength at this point in which we can see that we have been taking the low and after that a very quick bounce has been taking place through which we get towards the resistance here as well it's very normal to expect this consolidation taking place and i think that if you're looking at the higher time frames we get a very bullish daily candle on the uh, on the ethereum against usdt so if we want to continue making some movements here i think that you don't really want to get a very sharp correction in the case of ethereum you don't want to see it going towards 1175 which you want it to be at 1190 if we do that and just hold around 1190 to 12 i think we are going to get continuation here again and then when the first real resistance is 1270 but i think that we just break through it and we are facing 1300 next as the primarily resistance zone if you're looking at more of those altcoins for instance chainlink this is a potential position that i'll be looking at in which we can completely erase the correction which we have been doing previously in which strength on the markets are going to push back and i think that the coming few days, especially with the macroeconomics kicking in with PC inflation as well on Friday, are going to be crucial triggers for the markets. If Bitcoin is going to have a relatively short correction taking place here, breaks the resistance and continues moving to the upside, we can actually conclude that the higher time frame charts are going to look better as well. Today we're also going to be focusing on what the US indices are going to do, sharp correction taking place probably some relief before continuation of the correction is are going to be likely at this case but overall dollar continues to show weakness um, corrects the entire move up bitcoin just consolidates here as well if you're looking at the dollar we can say that the dollar has been making a slight bounce but overall the trend remains to be down and it remains to be showing weakness so the ingredients are there and now bitcoin needs to crack that resistance zone and once it does we are going to get continuation on the markets and it becomes a little bit easier to trade the markets, especially with the news kicking in. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, check out our premium membership, also our copy trading. Make sure to check out our trade letter. I'll be back tomorrow with a fresh new update. Ciao.